Hey folks, it's Jason here, Old Car Guy, and uh, I've been frauded, and I need your help. So we are out here at the new property, and as I kind of spin around, you'll see, well, there's not much going on here. So I'll give you a little bit of an update as to where we are so far with the property. You see back a little while ago I had uh, an offer put in on a mini home, which in Canada is 16 feet wide, 74 feet long, and it's basically constructed like a house or a what used to be called a trailer, uh, but uh, very well constructed and all new designs and whatnot. So we, we were looking at a used one. and. We had to let that one slide simply because the bank gave us a little bit of a hard time on the location of where we were putting it. You see, this piece of property, although it's zoned as residential, is behind our shop and mixed with commercial. And they figured that, well, in the event that I ever default on the loan, that they couldn't market it and sell it to get their money back, which I think is a crock of poop. But Nevertheless, it held us up to the point where we had to let our offer expire on that mini home. And, you know, totally out of our control, but nevertheless, it sucks on a number of levels. One is the person who was trying to sell it was relying on us to come and get things uh, together to be able to buy it. Uh, two, we were reliant on that to buy it and save ourselves money uh, versus going out and buying something else. Uh, at a higher price and then after literally the day after our offer expired uh, the bank comes back and says yes they will finally do it uh, after much consideration which by then it was too late because when our offer expired apparently there was another one on the table to jump right in there uh, so we lost out on that used mini home which led us to think this padded area here is set up for a mini home um, it's quite wide it's very long and well we said why not just go with another mini home so I contacted the local dealer here who we've bought two homes from in the past as they had one set up on display that we had looked at previously and it had already sold and that would have been the quickest way to get one because apparently there's a, like a six or seven month wait to special order a new home based on this whole housing shortage that everyone's experiencing and it's no different here in Canada. Uh, so he did say back in January, we ordered a, another display home to sit behind their lot to show and it's due to arrive in June, June 21st to be exact. So he showed us the plan. It was basically what we were looking for anyway. Uh, a few things we may have changed, but in the position that we're in with no home currently because we sold our house that deal is signed sealed and delivered we are currently living out of our camper which was what we do in the summertime anyway uh, but we physically have no home no address and so we decided that that was the way we were going to go we we opted to um, go with a brand new one and it's about a month out before it lands here so we do have some groundwork to do uh, we want to level up this pad. We got to get the plumbing. We got to pour a concrete pad. We will be building a shop at some point. You can see our septic there all dug up and ready to roll. Uh, and I think where we're going to put the shop is probably right along here somewhere, kind of taking up a little bit of this driveway, which is no big deal because technically the right of way comes in along that side of the tree line. And we may just have a little circle loop around here and just haul some fill in here where these trees are. We'll get those out and just kind of widen the driveway out. So I don't know the exact dimensions or what kind of a shop we're gonna build, but nevertheless, uh, this is likely the area that we will build it in. So on to the meat and potatoes of this video. I didn't wanna drag it out too long, but I need you guys to help me with something. You see, Facebook Marketplace, there was a guy and he was advertising shipping containers and a lot of you guys had suggested that I order a shipping container to store my stuff in uh, which is something that I was probably going to do anyway but thanks for the suggestion 
Uh, looked several places. A lot of them, they were sold or they were too expensive or whatever the case may be. Uh, this one particular fellow was advertising them and uh, at a pretty decent price, a 20 foot container for, well, $2,500 delivered. Long story short, he sent me an invoice. I paid it due to deliver in five to seven days. I texted the guy for a confirmation that he received my funds. He replied back, yes. I asked him when I could expect it. He says, looking like Friday or Saturday of that following week. No problem, I can be available. Gave him my cell phone number. Um, Friday or Saturday kind of came and went. Monday, I texted him. I said, well, I didn't hear from you Friday or Saturday. He says, yeah, it's looking like Wednesday at three o'clock by the time we can get there. I said, okay, no problem. So keep in mind, he's got my money, yet he is still, he is still replying to my texts and my emails. Then I said on Wednesday, because Wednesday was the day we were packing up our house and we had to be out and uh, we were trying to get all of the stuff out of there, uh, the remaining stuff that was in the garage, uh, our storage sheds that were at the house. Uh, we have our cars, three vehicles full of our belongings. Blackjack is full of crap. Junior's Volkswagen is full of crap. And currently this section of our shop is full of our crap. So this is what we're up against is I'm taking up now space in my shop for all of our belongings. Three vehicles are full of our belongings. What we didn't bring here with our clothes and our food and all that stuff, we took to the camper. So the camper is jam packed full of stuff as well. Long story short, this guy, Mark, who defrauded me out of $2,450, will now not return my calls. And let's back up. So on Wednesday, like I said, we were packing up, getting everything ready. We had no container still. So at 6.22, and I'll show you this text on the screen right now, I said, any update? And he says, you should be hearing from a driver anytime. I waited around here for another hour before I unloaded the other two vehicles. Still no container. So we unloaded the shop truck uh, in here as best we could. I left a lot of stuff like uh, the bed frames, the headboards, and stuff like that. I left all that on Dale because I had that all loaded up. <clears throat> Come to work the next morning, still no container. Uh, texted the guy several more times that day, no responses. Well, one snide response. Um, but here it is uh, Wednesday the following week, <clears throat> still no container. So what I need your guys' help with is two things. One, I, I feel like an idiot and you know everything seemed legit the invoice that he sent me this is the way I do business with a lot of things um, in the car business and uh, I just felt comfortable doing it otherwise I wouldn't have and I got had so please go easy on me in the comments I mean some people are going to be inclined to troll this but what I want from you guys is I want you to take this cell phone number right here that I'm putting on the screen now and this email address and I want you to spam the hell out of it I want you to let him know how much of a fraud he is I want him to be so annoyed that he's gonna have to change his cell number because of what he's done uh, which he may do or he may not but nevertheless I need your guys' help to let this piece of shit know that stealing money uh, from innocent people, from businesses, I mean, and I'm sure I'm not the only one, is wrong. And if I can't get my money back, I can at least get some satisfaction knowing you guys have helped me uh, annoy the crap out of them. So please, take the number, text it, text it multiple times. Just keep going. If you've got two different cell phones, three different cell phones, different members of your family, spam the hell out of it. Um, and just let them know what a piece of crap he is for uh, for taking my money and not delivering on a container. So um, I don't know about you, twenty five hundred bucks is a lot of money to me, and to a lot of you guys it probably is as well. So 
um, that's money that we had set aside uh, you know for different things and one of them was was to be able to have this container to store our stuff while we were waiting for our house and now we're waiting for a whole month and we're tying up this bay in this in the shop here for another month uh, until we get the house landed and, and all the everything that needs to be done to it so yeah I, I feel I, I, I don't know I, I just I feel like um, I feel like I'm an idiot like I like I should have known better but like I said everything that up till that point even after he had my money he continued to reply to my texts which I thought was strange if he was a scammer uh, because if you were a scammer and you got the guy's money I think at that point you'd be like hmm, no more need to carry on this charade 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 No, it's just, it was weird that he just kept going with it right to the bitter end until uh, I expected to see it and then nothing. So I did contact the RCMP and I contacted my bank and there's a Canadian anti-fraud centre uh, which is headed up by the RCMP as well, which uh, all the information has gone to. And unfortunately, um, not like I expected really to get anywhere, but there's not much they can do. So um, at this point, I'm out the money, I'm out of container, I'm taking up uh, valuable storage space in my shop, and now we just carry on. So guys, like I said, need your help. I'm gonna leave these numbers on the screen, now you know. So please, head on over there, send a nasty email, I don't care what you write, you can write them a love letter, you can send them some cookie recipes, I don't care. Just whatever you wanna do, and, uh, and same thing with the text. Help me out. Let him know how much of a POS he is, and uh, let's try and get this guy wiped off the map as far as uh, his scamming abilities. Anywho, that's all I wanted to do. Wanted to give you an update on the land and on the home. I also wanted to give you this little uh, tidbit of information, and hopefully you guys can come through, uh, follow through with me. And uh, if you don't follow me on Instagram, please go do that. And if you do send him an email or a text, screenshot it. Tag me on Instagram and let me know what you've said. Make it fun, guys. Anyways, stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. Love you guys. God bless. We'll see you in the next one.